All right, well, today I am super excited because I have finally got something that is going to at least mostly solve one of the biggest complaints that I have about my Tesla and that I've had about Teslas over the year, which is that there is no CarPlay or Android Auto in the car. So we have this rear seat display system, which is wireless CarPlay compatible, and we're gonna get it installed in the back seat of our Model Y here. So stick with me and I'll show you how to get one in there and show you how it works. What's what? All right, well, this is Hancho's brand new CarPlay compatible rear seat display system for the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. And why I'm particularly excited about this is that the back seat of the Tesla you know, for our kids at least who are mostly back there, and then anytime we've got adults back there, it's pretty boring space. You know, it's nice and roomy. Uh, one of the reasons that we got the Y over the three was a little bit more space back there. Plus Tesla overall with uh, things like the big expensive panoramic glass roof that goes over the back, does make it feel bigger back there, but there's pretty limited uh, entertainment options or anything to do back there. So especially on longer road trips, our kids are you know often kind of bored back there and they end up bothering us and asking for us to put stuff on the main touchscreen in the front, which is distracting while we're driving. So if you want entertainment options in the back of a car, there's absolutely nothing out there for uh, Tesla, uh, at least that comes from Tesla standard. And there's pretty much not other options out there in any other competing cars sort of in the same price range as well. You would generally have to step up to something much more expensive than sort of the luxury realm, like maybe a, a Mercedes or a BMW. Uh, or, you know, what we've been doing, which is just letting the kids use iPads in the back for longer trips. But this is going to change all of that and give us the ability to actually watch some of their shows on there. And I can't wait to see how CarPlay works on here as well for some of the other uh, options that we'd like on uh, in the car. Now, if you're interested in getting your own, I, of course, will have the link in the description down below. Make sure to use my code to save and you can get your hands on your own or any of the other awesome products that Hancho offers, uh, some of which I featured in the channel before. All right, so let's go get this installed. All right, now, as viewers of the channel know, one of my biggest complaints about Tesla is that you have no option in here for CarPlay or Android Auto. Now, of course, Tesla does give you this nice giant uh, touchscreen display up here, and their software has gotten better and better. They have you know more interactions here of different music providers, so, for example, we've got not only the radio, but also Spotify, TuneIn, Tidal, and most recently they added Apple Music, which is what I primarily use. So that's good for me, but uh, I still feel like there are times when I would much rather have sort of the native Apple Music car interface. Uh, and there are also times when I would like to be able to listen to things like my podcast, have access to Apple Maps or Waze for different routing options, uh, rather than just the default that you get in the car. And I am pretty excited now to have the chance to actually have CarPlay, even though it's in the back of the car, and we'll see how that ends up working out. All right, well, we're now back here in the back of the Tesla Model Y, and like I said, it's, you know, roomy back here, especially in terms of headspace. Uh, I'm 6'1", and I've got more than enough space back here, but it's kind of boring back here. Really, all we've got is you know, our view of the uh, touchscreen up there, uh, which obviously we're not in control of, and then down here, all we have are vents and USB-C ports, nothing else. So of course we could do kind of a back seat mounted tablet type of thing, but I think this is gonna be a much better option for our family. All right, well, one thing I forgot is that we put the child locks on here, so I had to just crawl out of the front seat to get back out of the car. So don't make that mistake if you're filming a video. Anyway, what we're gonna do here is now replace this uh, central vent piece here with our display screen. And all we really need to do is just pop this part off, which actually comes off much more easily than you would think. And um, we're going to replace it with our screen unit here. We're going to run the wires down into uh, the computer port that you'll see down here. And it's gonna be relatively simple. Okay, so first off, taking this part off is actually super easy. Uh, you can see you just pull on it and it unclips and will pop right off. So we then just need to remove uh, this uh, what is that? four pin connector that is actually what powers the USB-C ports here. That's just gonna come straight off. And as you can see, we now uh, 
are just going to um, replace it with this and wire this in. All right, so first off, we are, my strategy here is gonna actually be to run this wire um, up through the, uh, this part here. Let me see if I can do it without taking this part off first. And what I'm gonna need to do is use this included pry tool here, this orange one, to take off the very bottom panel here, which is not connected by screws or anything. There's just four clips that hold it on. So uh, I'm basically just gonna kind of work my way around it and um, pull that part off. It shouldn't be too difficult. And that's gonna give me access to the onboard computer port down here. There we go. And that's off. Now, uh, let's see. So we need this part down there. And we basically just need this one with the uh, green part on it run up through here, which is going to plug into the actual unit here. There we go. Now the other thing you could do if you're less stubborn than me and just want to use a screwdriver is just take this panel off too. It's actually pretty easy to come like that to take it off. Uh, the bottom part here just has two screws on it, and once you take them off, the whole thing will just kind of unclip off. Um, or you can try to feed it up that way, like I did. All right, so now we've got this part here, and I'm just going to connect that to our uh, unit here. It'll only go in one way, so you can't do this wrong. And now yeah, we're on. So we've got that part there. Um, and we can kind of these cables clip back in or tucked away. So I'm gonna put this on here for now just to kind of make sure everything powers on and it works first. Uh, but I'm not gonna fully push it in yet. And then, so we've got two cables that come down here. This long skinny one is actually for the um, pass uh, passenger seat controls. So this will give us the option to actually move that seat forward or back if you want to uh, make it a little bit easier to get in and out of the car here. It can actually be a great option for like a rideshare driver or something. Uh, if you have, have people in the back, but not often somebody in the front. But since we don't have that, I actually don't really want the kids messing with uh, the seat. So I'm probably just gonna kind of tuck this cable away and actually not connect it. But I'll show you how uh, it would connect. And then the big one that we've got here with the white parts, this is going to hook into our onboard computer back here for power and for all the controls. And so, uh, all I'm gonna do here is unclip this uh, part here back, uh, this blue part here. All right, so this is the port that we're going to uh, disconnect and plug into. And basically, um, like I already did it, but you just push on this little springy part here and that's gonna allow you to pull this out. And we're just gonna get these two parts in here, which uh, I'm just gonna do because it's too hard to do one-handed. I'm just gonna clip that in, connect the whole thing together and then put the port back on. All right, cool. So I plug those in and I can see it's already powering up. And that's just what that looks like now. I'll plug them together there. And of course I'm gonna tidy up some of these wires and stuff in here. Um, and then I'm basically gonna kind of um, push right back in as much as I'll go. And then I'm gonna kind of get this one this way. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna kind of get this one like this. And then that's gonna be flat enough that I can get the panel back on here. So I'll just do that next. But before I get everything hooked back up, let's see. If you're interested in having the passenger seat controls as well, what you need to do is actually wind up the uh, smaller, thinner cable. It is this one with these two ends uh, up underneath this passenger seat here. And we'll bring it right about here. And then what it can do is actually this little panel here uh, will pop off. Yep, you pull it like that. And then you can see in here, here is actually where that control plugs in. And we can actually just stick the wire up through the seat into here, unplug this, and then essentially plug it in. So let me just do that now. So you can see here, here's the little cable. Just pull that out gently. It's a little four pin one. And I'm just gonna run the other cable up under here. And pulling the little panel on the side here out helps a lot with this. You can do it without doing that, but uh, just unclicking that from the back makes it a lot easier to get your fingers in here. All 
All right, so we got that there. Plug in this part. Only goes in one way, so you know you've got it right. And then same thing here, which I probably should have paid attention to which way it goes. I think it goes that way. All right, and now we should be able to control our seat. Very nice. All right, perfect. So we've got that set. And the last thing I just want to check is that our USB does in fact work. So I'm going to use my awesome braided and 90 degree angled USB-C to lightning adapter uh, or cable, I mean, uh, from Tamai. You'll also find the description for that below. And yeah, getting power. Awesome. And I should actually be able to plug my phone in and see some of the stuff off of there on there as well. So let's see. Nothing will let me do this while I'm filming. Okay, so we've got the device powered on now, and that's pretty cool looking. So a nice big screen, and let's just kind of explore what we've got here. So that, I guess, allows us to turn the climate on and off back here. Okay, yeah, so we're on the climate. So we're on now, and this will let us set how strong we want it. Here is the heated seat control. So I can toggle all of those and go to each different level here. Turn it off. And here's how I can control the seat. Move it, tilt it up, back, forward and back. That's really cool. You can kind of also just drag it. And now here, look at that. We've actually got Android running on here. So we have access to the Play Store and YouTube directly from here. Uh, all right, so let's get ourselves connected. How do we do that? Probably go back here. All right, there's media controls controls for the car. Here's to lock the screen so that way the kids won't mess with it. That's kind of nice. I like the clock and this uh, thing there. And then I guess that's full power off. All right, so you can see we can control the media controls back here too. All right, so let's get the settings on here. Okay, so time uh so we probably should just get this connected to wi-fi first and i bet some of this stuff is gonna automatically happen all right so we want fahrenheit android settings oh okay oh look at this it's actually running full on android let's see can we tell what it is msm 8953 for arm 64 okay this is a sim slots that's weird <laughs> Android 11, and, oh, that's pretty cool. So <laughs> we've got like full on Android here. All right, um, so I'm gonna get this on Wi-Fi first and then we can get the other stuff going. Okay, so we are on Wi-Fi now. And let's do Bluetooth. We're gonna get our phone connected to this so that hopefully we can use CarPlay as well. All right, now this is awesome. So we've got full on CarPlay running on here. So uh, this is really awesome. It's just like complete first party uh, kind of um, CarPlay here. So we've got access to our Apple Maps, our messages, um, we can do Apple Music through here. I've got my podcast app and I can even make phone calls and everything from here. So that is super cool. I'm very happy with that. Now, it's a little bit laggy right now just because I'm also recording on the phone. So the phone has like no processing power. So let me stop for a second just so I can get back out of here. All right, but that is amazing. And then we've got other stuff on here too. So you have music and video, which you can put either stuff locally or connect to USB and do that. Um, you can get over the air updates here to the firmware, uh, which is pretty cool. And you, uh, there's YouTube with the full on play store here. All right. So we've got YouTube on here. Now look at that. That is a nice crisp screen. All right, so to actually get the audio output from here into the car, we're just gonna use the Bluetooth menu on Android here, and we're initiating pairing and doing that in the car too. Now, 
get connected there. Okay, so now we should have audio and and uh, no messages. And let's just see if we can now play. Get our YouTube going here. Uh, I mean, let's watch some Tesla Tyler while we're at it, right? All right. Well, at least we have audio in here now. Yeah, this is a really nice screen, to be honest. Uh, I said it was 8K in like the little promotional video here, but it looks fantastic, I would say. Um, I'm kind of jealous now of the kids uh, being able to sit back here. All right, there we go. All right, nice. All right, cool. So now, yeah, so we've got everything set up here. We can do our car play back here. I've got all of the uh, native built-in apps. So there's YouTube and we've got Disney Plus and Netflix even. So lots of entertainment options back here. So this is looking awesome. All right, great job, Hancho. All right, yeah. Looks like that works over wires too. So even better connection then. Awesome. Oh, cool. I can even... Yeah, I can use a better route planner for uh, routing here. I can do charge point, plug share. I can listen to my audiobooks, do other routing and stuff. Yeah, it doesn't like it when you're vid uh, taking a video. But awesome. Very cool upgrade. Very happy with this. All right, now we've got one last thing here, uh, which uh, was included in what I got from Hancho. So we would be remiss if we did not put this plaid uh, badge on the car. So obviously there's no you know plaid uh, version of the Model Y. Uh, nor did they even put these badges on the plaid, uh, actual plaid ones anymore. But uh, I think, you know, just going with the look of the spoiler, we certainly need this. So be a simple uh, little adhesive thing here. I don't know. Let's see if anybody ever even notices this. Maybe at a supercharger or something. But all right, we're going to... Yeah, right there is where we go. All right. All right. <laughs> it's official. The only plaid dual motor, uh, only plaid uh, Tesla Model Y in existence now. Uh, it's kind of like putting an M badge on a non M BMW. It's kind of obnoxious, but I mean, why not, right? That's who we are now with our spoiler. All right, well, I am super happy with that. That uh, really solves the problems that I've got with not having CarPlay and some of the other entertainment options in here. And I think it's going to make our road trip so much more pleasurable now with the kids, uh, giving them some options and stuff back here. I'm kind of jealous. I think um, I might be sitting back here more often now. All right. Well, if you're interested in getting your own, make sure to check out the links that I've got in the description below to Henshaw. And they've got a ton of awesome products there. Uh, not only this one, but some of the other ones that I featured as well. Make sure to use my code to save. And with that, thanks so much for watching. Please do give this video a like if you found it interesting and useful. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any other uh, accessories for your Tesla as well or any EV reviews. And with that, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you out there on the road.